OK, so we have the limbs rigged now and have also added in some basic space swapping options to give the animator more flexibility. We do still have more work to do though on the limbs. If you remember, when we built the skeleton we added a series of twist joints. At the moment these don't really do much, so let's now look at getting these working. Really quick question for you now. How would you like to help support the future of this channel and to keep these videos free? Well, there are a few options. One would be to simply treat me to a coffee at my coffee page as a quick and easy thank you. You could also grab something from the Ant CGI store or one of my other online stores like Cubebrush and Gumroad. This is where you will also find the course files that go with this course so you can download them and follow along. However, for as little as 99p a month, you could join the Ant CGI Club. There are a few ways you can join. You could head over to my Patreon or Coffee pages, or, or alternatively, simply hit that Join button below this video. In short, the more support I get, the more time I can dedicate to creating more high quality content just for you. To get more information on how you can help, follow the link on the screen or in the description below. OK, now that's out of the way, let's get on with the video. Let's switch to FK so we have more direct control over the shoulder. And also get rid of the textures. And turn on wireframe. If I rotate the upper arm, you see that the shoulder follows the joint, as you would expect. The problem is that this isn't a natural deformation. If you rotate your own arm, you will see that the shoulder area doesn't twist like this. Instead, it twists around the bicep area. So we need to mimic this in our rig. This is where the twist joints come into play. Let me select the upper arm twist joint. Back when we were skinning the model, we made sure the twist joint influenced the shoulder, not the upper arm joint. This is so we can control this area more, like this. We can rotate the twist joint back to keep the shoulder steady. What we can also do is use a second twist joint here to make the blend down the arm more gradual. OK, let's undo that. First, let's duplicate these twist joints. And we also need to move them out of the hierarchy. There we go. Let's rename these to follow instead of twist, because the twist joints are going to follow these joints. We will call this one follow tip, as it's the end joint. OK, let's move these back now behind the arm. Next we need a locator. Call it upper arm aim left and match its position to the follow joint using the Match Transformations tool. Now move this back too so we can see it. We need the locator to move with the follow joint, so parent it to it. There, we can see it in the hierarchy. So as this joint rotates, the locator follows with its offset distance. What this setup will do is let us force the twist joint to always point at the locator, which will keep it steady, meaning the shoulder won't twist, even though the arm is. But it will allow us to still raise and lower the arm too, so we will get a more stable and natural shoulder movement. OK, so we need the Z axis to aim at the locator, but we also need the Y axis to stay fixed onto the elbow. So how do we do this? Well, we can use an aim constraint, which will keep the axes aligned for us. Select the elbow joint, and then the twist joint, and go to Constrain, Aim. Let's reset this. If you remember, we used one of these on the eye controls earlier in the workshop. Now if you prefer, you could experiment with the Aim Matrix node instead if you are wanting a more economical setup. We are using a constraint because we need the translation values available on the actual joint, so any animation can be baked and exported later. 
So first we need the aim vector. So looking at the joint, we want the Y axis to point at the elbow. So set the second column, which represents Y, to 1. And zero out the X column. With the up vector, we want to use the axis which is going to point at the aim locator. This is the Z axis. But because the Z axis is pointing forwards, we need to use a negative value, so it looks behind the joint instead. So set the third column, which is the Z column, to minus 1. Set world up type to object up, because we want to use an object to help drive the Z axis. And now we input the name of the locator. So upper arm aim left. And apply that. Ideally you don't want any rotation values appearing here. Let's test this now. Actually let's show the rotational axes so we can see how the joints are rotating. And this one. So I can raise and lower the arm and also move it forwards and backwards. But if I twist it, the shoulder stays steady because the z-axis is staying locked onto the locator. If I move the locator, you can see it's following now. That's the first part done. So next we need the follow joints to move with the arm too. But we need to be careful so we don't add that twist back in. To do this, we're going to use an IK handle. So, go to Skeleton, IK Handle and open the options. We need a Rotate Plane Solver here, so we can control that twisting movement. Create one from the Follow Joint to the Follow Tip Joint. Let's rename this to Upper Arm Follow IK Handle. We're going to parent this to the Elbow Joint, but first match the transforms so it's the same position. And now parent it to the main Elbow Joint the skinned joint. There we can see it in position. What this will do is make the IK follow the arm, which will then move the follow joints for us. So if I rotate the shoulder, the joints and the locator follow it. The same happens if I raise and lower the arm. So the locator is staying behind the arm. The problem is, the twist has come back again. We can fix that easily though with the IK handle. Let's find it. There it is. All you need to do is set the pole vector attributes to zero. Now we can move the arm and the locator follows. And if we twist it, the shoulder maintains its orientation. OK, now we need to update the second twist joint here. We want this to be rotated halfway between the upper arm joint and the elbow, so we get a more gradual blend. Open the node editor. Bring in the main upper arm joint, not the twist joint. And now bring in the second twist joint. Open these up. So we want to affect the Rotate Y axis. If we connect the Rotate Y attribute on the upper arm directly to the Rotate Y attribute on the twist joint, we are getting the rotation back, but it's far too much. So we need a way to reduce that value. Let's create a Multiply Divide node and call this Arm Twist Multi. Although you should add the left in here too, so it won't clash when you do the right arm. Connect the upper arm's Y rotation to input 1X. And then output X to the twist joint's rotate Y attribute. So, as we have seen before, we can use this to adjust the main rotation value. At the moment, input 1X is being multiplied by input 2X so by 1, 
which means we will get the same value. If we change input 2x to 0.5, we will be getting half the value. So if we rotate the control now, the twist joint is moving half the amount, giving us that nicer, more gradual blend down the arm. We can rotate the upper arm now, and the shoulder stays level, and the bicep area is following. One quick tip would be to create a custom bicep twist attribute and connect that to the input 2x attribute on the multiply divide node. This will then give the animator complete control over how this area twists, so they can correct it if they need to on more extreme poses. OK, let's reset this. All we need to do now is make the follow joint move with the torso, otherwise the locator will be left behind and then the shoulder won't deform as expected. Let's move the torso. OK, so we probably want it to follow the spine 3 joint here. This is the closest. We aren't going to parent the follow joints to it, as that would change the main skeletal structure, and they would ultimately end up being exported to the engine. So let's just constrain them, and we can just use a parent constraint with maintain offset enabled. OK, good. That now follows. Now move the follow joints to the main arm group, under the rig systems group. So we've done the upper arm and the shoulder now deforms in a more natural way. So let's now look at the lower arm. If we rotate the wrist, you see we get quite a harsh twist here. If you look at your own arm as you twist your wrist, you will see it's the forearm that twists, not the actual wrist. So that's where this twist joint comes in. We need to pass the twist down to this joint instead. The other axes are fine, it's just the twist we need to correct. And we can use a similar setup to how we controlled the shoulder. Start by creating a new locator and snap it to the wrist position using the Match Transformations tool. Let's move it back too. And rename it to Hand Aim Left. This is going to be used just like the Upper Arm Aim Locator above, but instead this will trigger the twist rather than remove it. We don't need any follow joints this time, instead just parent the locator to the Hand Left joint. So now it will follow as the hand rotates, and because it's parented to the main skin joint, this will work regardless of if we are using IK or FK to animate the arm. What we need now is for the twist joint to be locked to the locator, so we can use another aim constraint. Again, we can tell it to always look at the elbow, so it maintains the right orientation. So, select the elbow or lower arm joint, And now we need the hand twist joint, here. Open the aim constraint options again. And change the world up object to the hand aim locator this time. Although we still need the y axis to point to the elbow, it needs to be looking behind the joint instead. So change the aim vector from 1 to minus 1. And apply that. If I move the locator now, the twist joint follows. You can only just see it moving. Let's show the rotational axes. So that's a bit clearer. This time if we rotate the wrist, you see the twist joint isn't moving. That is until we twist it, and then it starts to follow the locator. So we are checking for the twist this time. What we can do now is pass that rotation up to the forearm twist joint. Let's go back to the node editor. We can use the same multiply divide node, so open this up. 
We can remove these. Bring in the hand twist joint and the lower arm twist joint. Move these up here. Now connect the hand twist joints Y rotation to input one Y. And then output Y to the lower arm twist joints rotate Y attribute. The forearm now follows as the wrist twists, but again, it's too much, so we need to reduce it. Let's half the amount again, so change this to 0.5. So the lower arm now has a nice gradual twist. The beauty of this setup is we can position the hand anywhere we like, and the lower arm follows. If we simply use the wrist joint to drive the lower arm joint and connect to them directly, without the aim constraint and the locator, which would have been an option, there would be poses where it wouldn't work if the joint hit gimbal lock or the rotations clashed, and this would result in the twist joint flipping or rotating the wrong direction. This way the rotations are dictated by the locator's position, so it makes it much more stable and more predictable. OK, so that's the arm twist joints rigged and we have some much nicer and more natural deformation in the upper and lower arm now. This setup can easily be applied to the leg now too. So I'm going to pause the video while I do that and also update the opposite side. OK. So here you can see the follow joints we just built. And here they are for the opposite arm. Down here you can see them just outside each thigh. And they are controlling these twist joints in exactly the same way as with the arm. With the feet we have the aim locator here. What you need to remember with the feet though is the orientation is slightly different. We kept them in world space. So when creating the aim constraint here, make sure maintain offset is enabled. Or the foot will move to point towards the calf joint. So we can pose the arm in IK like this, and the twist joints automatically adjust to the pose. Again, at this stage, we can see the skin weights need another pass. Now we are getting a clearer picture of how the model needs to deform. Let's switch the legs to FK. So you can see we have the twist moving up here as the foot rotates. The same with the thigh, the rotation is being passed to the twist joint here. With the leg follow joints, these simply follow the cog joint. Just like with our arm follow joints, they followed the upper spine joint or the spine 3 joint. OK, that's the twist joints rigged. We now only have a few more areas which need controls building or connecting, and that's the fingers, clavicle and the foot. So let's focus on the foot next, as that's a much more complicated setup. OK, that's another video over. Thanks for watching right to the end, and make sure you also check out some of the other free videos and courses that I have available. You can find links to all these on the screen now, and in the description below. Remember, to help support future content and keep these videos free, visit the Ant CGI store, or join the Ant CGI club. Alternatively, if you would just like to show your appreciation for these videos, why not treat me to a coffee at my coffee page? Again, the link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again for watching. This is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.